Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Mazzara here, March 12th, 2020. Thought I'd pop in this morning in light of all the volatility and to help you put what's been going on, which of course is dramatic in what I believe to be its proper perspective. I uh, won't take too much time, but uh, again, you're, as you know, not that it's at all unusual, you're going to be hearing a lot from me uh, going forward. In front of you is the S&P 500 chart for this entire bull market that was. As of yesterday, officially, uh, we closed down 20%. And that, per the textbook, is a definition of 20% from the previous all-time high. I used to always say, and I guess I probably still would, that bear markets really aren't just a 20% drop. I, we could have a 20% or more correction if conditions are good, and therefore the market comes bounding out of it uh, in short order. Well, as I have been preaching from right about in here, conditions aren't good by our assessment. The underlying data that instruct us in terms of where we are in the economic cycle was beginning to roll over. And as I did warn you, clients, you'll know this from review meetings, that once we go defensive, uh, there's good reason for it. And often the market will scream higher for a little while without us. And that's because of all the stimulus that comes in. And it comes in while everyone is still in disbelief and the consumer is still doing good and so forth. And the narrative from many uh, in high places is that, you know, look at the consumer, look at retail sales and so forth, jobless claims. And you can see this economy is in very good shape. Well, again, as we've illustrated a lot, you look at industrial production, you look at durable goods orders, you look at trucking, you look at uh, you know the manufacturing surveys, you look at other global data, data here and abroad, and you realize, oh, absolutely not. This is not the economy that we've had the last few years. This is something that is beginning to look troubling. And then when our own assessment via our own proprietary index turns red, then it's time to do some things. So last year, you'll recall, we put the collars on because I thought maybe I was getting a false signal because if the trade war goes away, we may be okay. And then since then, the data just in, that we think is important continued to on the on balance deteriorate. And so by the time we got to the beginning of this year, we changed the portfolios up where we had a lot of industrials and materials. Now we have a lot of utilities and staples. Uh, where we didn't have gold before, we now have gold. Where we didn't have a fund that shorts junk debt, we now have that. And some exposure to currencies. The stuff that we didn't used to have, that we now have, has all done really well against the market up until recently, up until this big blowout. Um, it depends on the day. We've still, as it began, it's, it did very well. Um, but it's not oppositely correlated to the market. It's just independent of the market. So there are times when for each of these positions own reasons, they'll go up when stocks go up, they'll go down when stocks go down. Uh, today, for example, last time I looked, the overall market was down about 7% and the core mix was down about 2.2%. Now that's good, capturing a less than a third of the downdraft, but we've had days where it was even better. Um, yesterday or day before yesterday when the market screamed higher, those funds were actually off just slightly or that core mix was. Um, but we've also had days where the market was up a bunch and the core mix was right there with it. So that's kind of how this works, folks. It's not, there's no perfect recipe. Um, there's no defined outcomes, except when you get to options, which I'll probably talk about. Um, so what you do is you study, you get a sense of macro conditions, you develop an assessment or a thesis, and then you do the right thing particularly when you're investing other people's money to compensate for what you see from a risk reward standpoint. So frankly, we like what we've done so far, but it's always a work in progress. It never stops as conditions change. And then of course we have the option that's going to expire for those of you who have the put option um, insurance, if you will, that expires in a little over a month and about 30 days out is where we start really losing time value in a hurry. So we've given ourselves another five days or so to divide, design what we believe to be the right hedge on a continuing basis. Okay, so uh, this trend line that I have drawn here, I, this is pretty much the bull market trend line. We tested it in 2011. We tested it in 2016. We tested it right on the nose in 2018, and we are testing it today. You can see the bottom, the, uh, the, the shadow or the tail of the candle. 
has been this low, the body right here means the market's trying to come back a little bit. We should have very little faith that this is going to hold under present you know, macro circumstances or general conditions. So folks in a bull market, you have a situation where you know the market rallies, people who maybe are trading and miss the rally, you know, they wait for another attempt, the market comes down, it dips. Therefore they say, oh, thank you, I got another chance. I buy the dip. In here, we had a huge dip. It was almost a bear market. Yeah, but not quite. And then it got bit in a big way, you know, buy that dip, buy that dip, buy the dip. The prevailing bias is higher. It's up. It's, it's uh, robust. It's optimistic. And generally, for, mo for the most part, for most of a bull market, rightfully so. Rightfully so here. Those of you who've been on the blog for a while know that right in here, all throughout, I was showing data and charts and periods that had this like 2011 we had almost 20 percent. we had about 16 percent here and each time we worked our way out of it took new all-time highs why was i confident because general conditions uh the our index and other things that we track is all saying well there is some deterioration general conditions are on balance good so we fully expected as we illustrated to see this right in here that wasn't the case ironically right in here we were bullish Right in here, we got defensive because now the risk is higher. I did not call this bear market. Uh, many people keep saying I did. I absolutely unequivocally did not. It would be completely disingenuous of me to suggest that I did. What I've been saying from here is that conditions are such that sometime over the next year, two, three years, this market is going to give up the ghost. It's going to... Uh, fall under its own weight, the bubble's going to burst under its own, you know, expansion or what have you. Or when conditions are like this, you get an exogenous shock and it could bring it, you could pull it forward. And that's exactly what's happened with this coronavirus. You know, with regard to the coronavirus, the economy is, the global economy, I mean, Italy is pretty much on lockdown. You know what happened in China. You know what we're experiencing now on a daily basis in the U.S., we don't get out of this without a recession. So if folks, make no mistake, I'll stop rambling here soon. What we're going to see is we are going to see some big, huge bear market rallies. I've been here, done this several times, believe it or not, in the last almost 36 years. So if I'm right, what we, uh, you know, what we have to look forward to, let me give myself some room here, is... Um, is, you know, whipsaws. So if indeed the, the, the bias has... has uh, has reversed and the trend is reversed. Then what happens? Like I said, then you get these you get these spikes, and you get people taking advantage of those. We've had several of those today to sell and bring the market down further. Um, we get a nice big spike. We get some good news. We get a trillion dollar fiscal stimulus package or something. You know, I'd probably be looking at you know maybe something a little in here, but then three thousand right in here. Uh, so you see the market, you know, you know, meander its way. You know, up and down, gets to 3,000, but uh, we still have, you know, terrible data coming in. Earnings just look abysmal, no earnings growth whatsoever. Realizing that, you know, these kinds of things take a long time to unwind and not to mention just massive defaults in the corporate debt space, which is virtually inevitable. We'll see to what extent they'll get bailed out. But, um, and then those, these people take that opportunity to, to sell it. So then you have your, you know, you have your lower high and so forth. That's the most likely scenario from my vantage point. Um, do I know that for sure? Of course not. Could this be unique? And could we, you know, somehow come all the way back and, and resume? Absolutely. Anything's possible. We'll be able to tell from the data to the extent that's possible. The data today is saying, no, that's, that's not, I mean, it's always possible, highly improbable. So, uh, so folks, what do we do? Well, for our purposes, on your behalf, um, what we do is we continue to crunch the data day in, day out, adjust the portfolios um, to compensate for what we see from a risk-reward standpoint, continue until we have evidence that this is over with some sort of hedge using options, best we can, to ensure that we don't suffer you know, the brunt of a ginormous bear market. Um, the way we calculate and the way we illustrate the risk now, clients who've been in the office, this will sound familiar, you know, we show you a graph and we show you a line that shows the value of your portfolio going down and then flattening out as the market goes down. And like I always say, and I'll just remind you viewers, 
that that is predicated on the asset classes that we own continuing to act as they have the last hundred years under these circumstances. Part of it is the put, and that's definable because you have a strike price and you make nothing but money below that strike price. And we know exactly how much on an intrinsic value basis at, at expiration that we make. But the other stuff, how gold reacts, how the junk bond short reacts, how the currencies react and so forth. That's something that depends. To give you an example, between the last two bear markets, the tech bubble bursting and the real estate bubble bursting, our core portfolio makes today, when we back test it, beat everything, stocks, you name it. Um, if we did this from the beginning of the bull market that just ended, it would have been, it would, your portfolio would have grown with a lot less risk, presumably, but it would not have grown by much relative to what the market did. Therefore, we weren't doing that because condi conditions said, be growthy, take advantage of the bull market. Um, but we switched. We switched to something more uncorrelated to stocks with a, with a chunk of it and more defensive with the utilities and the staples exposure. And uh, because that's consistent with what we're seeing right now. But this, this is the kind of portfolio that could do very well, even in an up market. So we're not abandoning the upside. Uh, some days it'll look like that. We're just trying to protect against the downside. The core allocation should do that to some degree but we could still capture a lot of this bear market without the put exposure. So, um, so that's where we are with that, folks. Going forward, it's just going to be a constant assessment. You're going to see more trade trade notices than you're used to because we're this is a dynamic situation and we have to be smart, calculating, and make good, smart moves based on how we you know quantify and qualify the data as it comes in. So, folks, not a time to panic. Of course, that's what's happening in the world right now. I, I sincerely feel bad for folks out there who um, were complacent or who you know, just thought that this could go on forever or who thought that simply because this is a, an election year that the market is, has to go up and we don't have a bear market. None of that has ever been true in the past. There's no reason why it would be true today. You know, stuff happens. Risk happens in a hurry. And um, what you have to do, and this is, this is our task and this is what we're going to try to do, continually, as long as uh, we are under your employ, and that is to really be deep in terms of our dive into conditions and um, be willing to act accordingly, to do hopefully very, very well during the spare market on a relative basis, and then make the proper shift at the proper time based on conditions to engage in those huge opportunities that are always there at the bottom of bear markets. Uh, my best guess is it's going to be a while before we're in that position, but I will keep you posted probably every day. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.